So this is the basic robot that I built in three days. Um, it's a pretty simple robot. Uh, definitely something that I would recommend. Uh, beginner teams, maybe not for a first robot for a team, but definitely maybe a second robot for a newer team or someone who's already done like VRC for one year. This would be a great robot to build. Um, it's got 257 RPM drive base with six motor drive. Um, it's got a little bit of a weird placement for the back motor. That's because I just didn't want to have to stack the motors because um, I already built the Cata Tower before then. Um, it's got a nice wedge at the back, flips up to start in size, um, and that's to push the tri balls over, and it also works pretty well for defense. Then it's got a two motor 20 RPM catapult. Um, those are red cartridges, and that's 12 to 60. Uh, the 48 tooth gears are just there kind of for bracing because we don't have any of the high strength lock bars. Um, then it's got a little ratchet back there um, to allow the catapult to easily hang and take some of the pressure off the motors during the match. Um, and then those little standoffs there are just kind of to grip onto the catapult. So it doesn't have an intake, that's definitely its biggest drawback, um, but it can do pretty much anything a normal robot can. Um, it has a funnel at the front to kind of store pry balls into the goal. Uh, and the front of it is under six in inches, um, so that makes it pretty easy to shove tri balls into the goal. And then it's got the big wedge there at the back. So yeah, that works really well. Um, it can climb over the barrier. Because, the again, the wedge is mounted on a hinge that allows it to just drive right over. Um, it doesn't need any skirts or sleds or anything because um, those little C-channels at the front, they just go right over the barrier. But they're designed so that um, if you're pushing on another robot, you don't just drive up on them instead of you actually can hit them and push them around and stuff because this is a fairly high torque drive. I'd probably go a bit faster, but if you're newer, it's definitely easier to control. Uh, those little strings on the front of the robot are to make match loading a little bit easier, just so that you only have to go, you don't have to go quite as close to the barrier in order to be able to say that you're legally touching it, especially if you're coming in at a weird angle, like something more like that. So the catapult itself is pretty basic. Um, you just have a 12 tooth slip gear in there. I'd recommend probably doing a second stage in there just to be able to um, get some higher resolution because this doesn't quite draw back as well. And that was made with a hacksaw, so definitely not the cleanest cut. Definitely recommend a belt sander if you have the equipment. Um, then 62 gear, so 200 RPM. And then match load wise, I just load those in straight down. See, so yeah, that works pretty well. Then you can just set another match load in it like that. and fire them across the field. Um, it's a nice high arc, which is good if another robot's playing defense on you. And finally, the hang. So when the catapult is up all the way, you can just kind of drive under the barrier like that. It kind of wedges itself up like that in the back, and then I have this fully automated. So it just kind of does that, and then it's just kind of bouncing up and down there. Um, could definitely clean that out, but I don't really care. And then it stops and it's, I turn the program off. It's fully suspended by that ratchet right there. Um, so that's just an A tier hang. Again, if you had a higher resolution on the catapult, you'd be able to pull this down a little bit further um, and lift your robot up a bit higher. And it's a little bit back heavy right now. So if you change the weight distribution a bit, you could definitely get it to B tier.